Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Zebra HZ. This is video six, and in today's lesson, we're talking about the oscillator wave editor. So this is the spot where we create our own waveforms, our own wave sets, morph between them. It's a lot of fun. So let's right-click the display, go to init preset, and down on the bottom left where it says OSC1, let's click that. And this blue spot over here, this blue rectangle is basically the editor that we're going to be making our own waveforms in. So we can do stuff here, which is kind of a convenient little spot, but I kind of like to go to the editor. So select open editor and we have a bigger screen, a little bit easier to work with. So what we're looking at here is going to be our default saw wave, which this shape here, as you'll notice, will be the same shape in our oscilloscope. So what we can do, we can hold Alt and then right click and add a node, and then we can move this around and move all these different points around. So right here, we've basically made a pulse wave. And we can see that this shape ch changes, or as this shape changes, so does the oscilloscope as well. Now we have 16 of these different frames, right? We have the first one here all the way up through 16. And now when it's on an init preset, it's just going to be saw waves. So there's really going to be no change. So we can select these different frames by clicking on them. We can click and drag and kind of cycle through them or something like that. And there's a lot of cool ways to change these. So let's say you want number one to go somewhere else. We can always hold control and then select number one and kind of move this wherever we would like to. So right now it's going to be on frame six. And here's a couple new, new tricks. So let's go to right click and hit preset. The first ones are saw, right? So let's say we wanna make this saw wave transition to a square wave at the end of this wave set. So we would select number 16 and then we would alt click up here, drag this all the way to the top here and kind of start building our square wave. We can drag this all the way to the right till it turns into almost a double saw here and then go back, grab the node here, go all the way down and kind of do the same thing where it turns into a double saw and then go right back. So now we have a square wave. We can hear it's a square wave, we see it's a square wave here, and it is a square wave on the oscilloscope. So if we go back to frame one, this is our saw. And then if we want to morph, we would just select the first one that we want to start with, and then the last one, which is 16, and right click, and then go to morph. So now, it's gonna morph into a square wave. Very cool, so go back to an init preset and let's say for the first one here, we do some really cool editing like this and we make a really amazing wave shape like that. We love this so much that we want to duplicate this but we don't want to do it again because the values might not be the same. So we can just always right click a different frame, let's say eight for example and hit duplicate and now we have the same waveform on frame one and we have the same waveform on frame eight. So let's say we want to exchange some, right? So let's say we want to move nine over to eight. We can do the control drag, drag thing like that. We totally can. But another way is to select number eight and then right click nine and go to exchange. And it's going to exchange eight for nine. So basically this geomorph is drawing the shape of our waveform with all these different points. And we can have a total of 32 different points in this waveform. So kind of a lot of possibilities to make. So for example, here's another cool trick here. So let's say we have this wave shape and we like it, but it's a little bit too linear, right? So what we can do is we can select this node, hold down control and then move it up and down. And we have basically the control of a curve on the left-hand side of the node, or we can hold down alt and then click and move. And we have the control of the right-hand side's curve. And we can see we can, that little curve down here on the oscilloscope right here. And we can always select multiple nodes. We can click and then drag over here. If we want to select like, I don't know, these notes here, we can select them all, kind of move them around like that if we want to. See how that changes the sound. And then we also have some different right clicking menus as well. So we can right click and we can insert a point, which is basically what we're doing with alt clicking, right? Something like that. Or we can remove it by alt clicking and, or alt clicking or actually right clicking and remove points. So we can do it two different ways. Alt clicking is kind of nice too, because you can just, you don't have to open up a menu. You can just alt click these different notes here, something like that. And then alt click to put them back. 
So let's say, for example, we have some really choppy curves like that, right? And we want to kind of smooth them out a little bit. We can select these here by box dragging these nodes right over here, right clicking and then going to smooth selected and it's going to make them much smoother. <laughs> And then we can always right click this, go to linear, and it's going to make them linear like we had them before. Another cool one is going to be peaks. So it's basically going to really sharpen, accentuate the node peaks to make a really spiky sound. And then if we select off this, we have no node selected, we can right click and then go to distribute all. And then it kind of just makes the even spacing between all the different nodes. So it's a little bit more even. And then another one here, let's go back to init preset. Let's make a couple different notes here, something like that. Let's maybe drag, maybe something kind of like this, right? So we can select all these here and then we right click and a cool one here is called line up selected. And when we select that, we have the left hand node gets lined up to the furthest right hand node. So these might be a lot of options to take in at once. So kind of just spend a little bit of time in here and kind of just know that these options are available to you because once you know that they're there and you might want to do something in the future, you can think, ah, I have the tool to fix that problem. And then you can always right click here and go to clear and then it's going to set all these to the minimum. So we don't really hear anything because there is no, no waveform until we make one. And also another thing that's going to be cool before we switch to the different modes here, we can always right click this here and go to copy and then we can go to another oscill oscillator <laughs> and then go to right click and then we can go to paste if we want to have the same wave set before or there. Or we can also do that here in this section here where we highlight these and then we go to copy wave set and then we can go to, I don't know, maybe number two, open this up and then we can go to paste wave set. So different ways to get to the, the to essentially the same spot. Okay, so take a deep breath. Let's go to the next mode because I know these can get a little bit overwhelming. So we know that Geomorph as is basically we're editing this waveform in this editor that looks like the oscilloscope, right? Makes sense. There's a saw wave. We move this around. Something like that. Oh, I'm an oscillator too. Good Lord. Right, so it basically mirrors what we're drawing here. So now if we go back to an init preset here and we go from Geomorph to a Spectromorph, so it looks very, very similar, but instead of looking at the oscilloscope drawing the shape, this is going to be on a spectrum basis. So if we drag this node all the way to the top here, uh, oh yeah, I've selected here. If we drag this one all the way to the top, so we have all of these harmonics at the top. That's basically drawing this shape here because horizontally we have 1,023 different harmonics from left to right, and they're going to be scaled logarithmically in a scale or in a range of 10 octaves, which is a huge, huge range. So if that doesn't make sense, take a look at this here. So let's grab the center note and let's kind of bring this down like that. And so maybe tighten these curves up a little bit with Alt and then Control, something kind of like that, right? And let's move this around. So I've essentially created a notch filter, right? So where this is down, this is going to be the lower volume in those harmonics. And as I move it left and right, it's basically going up and down the spectrum. So kind of think as this wave editor, if you turn this 90 degrees to the left, it's going to be basically mirroring how this spectrum view is kind of moving. So moving on from there, let's go to a knit preset. Let's go back to... Spectromorph. So something that's very, very cool, I think, of this mode here is this is a space where you can actually create your own filters, right? So we're kind of working on a spectrum basis, and we know filtering removes harmonics, removes sounds from the higher frequencies and below. So knowing that, we can actually make our own filters. So if we did something kind of like this, right? Let's maybe make something a little, little bit interesting, right? Maybe a peak like this. Let's make some interesting curves like that. Maybe tuck that in another one kind of down something up like that and make some interesting curves kind of kind of like that right so so this would essentially represent our filter so what we could do let's say we like the shape let's right click number 16 and let's go to 
uh, duplicate. So now we have frame one and frame 16 are going to be the same thing, right? So if we wanted to interpolate between these two, for example, we can select all these notes here that's gonna be our filter, and let's move all of these to the left for the first frame, right? And then right click 16, and then go to morph. So basically, as we, as we go through these wave sets here, we can see this whole section moving, right? And it's gonna act like a filter. <laughs> And always mess with the res over here, the resolution to kind of get the right changing that you would like. And then you can modulate this with an LFO, for example, like LFO1. So there you, you have, there you go, you have made your own filter and modulated it with this spectromorph. It's just a very, very cool feature. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense here. So let's move on to the different shapes here, or the different modes here. So we've gone over Geomorph and Spectromorph, basically drawing the shapes either in the oscilloscope look, looking view or on the spectrum. So Geoblend, so what the heck is this right over here, right? So once we select this, we have no sound because we haven't really drawn anything. So if we drew something kind of like a sine wave, something kind of like that, if that's even close, might be sounding more a little squarish. So it's essentially the same kind of concept as the geomorph where we're drawing this shape in the oscilloscope. But the advantage of this one is that we're drawing it a little bit more freehand. And in here we have 128 columns of resolution. And one of the big differences too, these are not, once you're moving them through the wave set, they're not gonna be morphed, they're gonna be blended. So if that doesn't really make sense, it's here's a good example to kind of give you the aha moment, right? So we go back to an init preset, and we're back in Geomorph where we covered the beginning. So let's say we wanted to do a pulse kind of square wave thing, right? So we right click, let's make a note kind of up here like that, and then bring this one all the way down. So let's select these two here, right? So we can box select both of these, Drag this all the way to the left, right? So we have a narrow pulse, pulse wave, right click 16, and then go to morph. Or no, go to uh, duplicate. Right, so 16 and one are gonna be the same. So number 16, let's move this to the center, something kind of like that. So we have a square wave, and now let's morph this again here. So let's morph it like that. So when we're moving, we have the pulse width modulation, right? Okay, so now that we have that concept, we know how that works. If we went to Geo Blend, for example, and did the same thing, so we go to the first frame, and then we make like a narrow pulse like this, and then on the bottom here, we're kind of doing something like that. So we still have our pulse wave, right? Now, if we right click 16 and then duplicated that and then change this to a square and move some of these kind of like that, right? And then now let's morph these two. So let's morph these and take a look at the difference here. You see how we're morphing these more so on these column levels here? We're actually not getting the pulse width change. And look at the oscilloscope as well. So that's actually how we're gonna be blending things. So that's the difference of morphing and blending. So there's morphing, right? It makes the pulse width. See so how these widen up right over here? And then back over here on the blend, it's a different functionality. Okay, so moving on from here, this is going to be the last one. So take another deep breath. I know this is a lot to take in. So kind of shake your hands out, get up, move around a little bit. And uh, I don't know, maybe pause the video, come back to it. We're gonna do the last one here. And this one's called Spectral Blend. So again, spectral, right? We're affecting the spectrum, but this is kind of the spot where we're getting into a really nice version of additive synthesis. So as we play some notes, we have nothing to play with here, right? So what we're doing here, we're editing a waveform on a spectrum basis, right? So basically from the spectrum right over here on the right, and these are gonna be 128 linear spaced harmonics. So let's say we wanna make a sine wave and we know it's one fundamental. So we grab a tone here and we bring this up. So we have one fundamental and we have a sine wave. We add some more. 
we can see that we're adding these harmonics right over here. Right, pretty cool. So we can hold down Alt and then we can drag with left click and kind of remove these here. And it's a very cool thing. So you might be wondering, so we're going upwards in amplitude, right? And then we hold Alt, just delete these here. And then we, what happens if we go downwards, right? All right, we have two here. Let's delete that one. Okay, we have a sine wave here. And then we go all the way to the top. We have a sine wave here. So what gives? So this is going to be changing the phase. So let's say we have the first one all the way to the top. Let's go to frame number two. And let's drag the first one all the way to the bottom. So we have two like that. The first frame is up, the second frame is on the bottom. Take a look at the waveform and how it changes the phase. Let's do the uh, frame series because it's actually going to be an integer value. So that's going to be the difference. So you might ask yourself, okay, why is that useful, right? Because we're really changing this on an additive basis where we have our harmonics so we can change the phase, right, all the way from so on and so forth. And what's kind of cool about this is once we're morphing in between different frames, we could have different of di different, I guess, different phases of these different harmonics, and they can kind of cancel and add together to make really cool sounds. So it's a very interesting concept that I, I would recommend to spend some time with because it's actually a lot of fun. And you'd be surprised how many cool different waveforms you can come up with this one. So for this one here, it does have, I guess, a little bit of different workflow here. So let's say we drag and kind of make some interesting shape like that, right? Okay, so really, really cool. So we have some different contexts here. So we have blur. So if we select this here, it kind of smooths out the transitions between these different forms here or these different harmonics so if we go forward again and we go back and forward you can kind of see it's a little bit smoother and you can blur it again and again and kind of really smooth out those curves if you'd like to and then next up we have a sharpen here so we sharpen this here and it kind of just makes those peaks a little bit sharper right keep going as much as we want and it gets pretty sharp and then the last one we have here is called Maximize. So it's going to take the loudest harmonic, bring it all the way to the top, and then scale everything equally at the same rate or the same amount. Okay, awesome. So that's basically these four different modes here. Hopefully that's kind of sunken in. I know it's a lot to take in in this video. It's a little bit longer than I would have imagined it to be, but there's a lot to cover in these modes here. So if you have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments. If you're still here throughout this whole video, put a weird emoji or something in the comments because I don't, I don't know how to tell if you're still there or not. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.